Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. A three-judge panel has begun hearing evidence now against Bailey Boswell. She could become the first female sentenced to death in the state of Nebraska. This for her role in the killing and dismemberment of a woman she met through a dating app. The details now from court in our top story at 5. Bailey Boswell was convicted of first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder last year. That for the slaying of Sidney Loof, a clerk at a Menards hardware store in Lincoln. Boswell's boyfriend during the slaying, pictured there, 54-year-old Aubrey Trail, was sentenced to death last month for fatally strangling Loof and dismembering her body. Authorities say Boswell lured the 24-year-old Loof to her death through the dating app Tinder. We know Iowa's legislative session wrapped up in May, and many of those bills that lawmakers passed in the final days are officially law today. Iowans are no longer required to have a permit or to take a safety training course. That's in order to buy a gun or carry a concealed weapon. A person trying to buy a gun will still need to pass a background check. And another law now makes it easier to form charter schools in the state. Meanwhile, a different law bans divisive concepts from being taught in the classroom and during government trainings. That includes ideas like systemic racism and white privilege. Republicans say it will not outlaw diversity training altogether. Two more laws address child care costs and access. The first creates a more gradual phase out of eligibility for child care public assistance. The second increases the number of children who can be served in an unregistered home setting. Now, this law changes it from five to six as long as it at least one is school age, one child that is. To see more details on all of these new laws, check out our website right now. They're all posted there at siouxlandproud.com or the KCAU 9 mobile news app. A preliminary report indicates that two people were aboard when a small plane crashed near Limoni along Interstate 35 this morning. The Decatur County Sheriff's Office says that plane crashed near the runway at the municipal airport. Airport sources say that plane was attempting to land. Authorities have not released any other details, including whether or not anyone was killed or hurt in this incident. Witnesses did say they heard what sounded like an explosion around the time of that crash. President Joe Biden met with first responders today. They're still working to find more survivors from that building collapse in Surfside, Florida. Meantime, there are major new safety concerns at the site. Round-the-clock rescue efforts are now on pause as engineers fear that parts of the building that are still standing could collapse as more victims, two children and their parents, were identified. Biden visited with the first responders working. What you're doing now is just hard as hell. Investigators from the National Institute of Standards and Technology starting their review into what exactly caused that catastrophic collapse. Here in Siouxland, many businesses in the Iowa Great Lakes region were negatively impacted last 4th of July, of course, because of pandemic restrictions. But this year, Lake Okoboji is bringing back things like live music and running full operations at Arnold's Park Amusement Park during this holiday weekend. Many businesses in the area are family owned, and they also expect a good crowd of visitors for the Independence Day celebrations, with officials saying 2021 will be a great rebound from this pandemic. The 4th of July this year will be a banner year for us in Okaboji, and hopefully we'll see more families gathered here than ever before. Based on some of the numbers that we're looking at so far, this could be one of our best 4th of July seasons ever. KCAU 9 News reporter Jason Toktajian explains what a big 4th of July weekend could mean for the Iowa Great Lakes businesses there and what officials expect for this holiday weekend that's coming up tonight at 6. And here in Sioux City, vendors are racing to get their stations prepared to sell to thousands this weekend for the 30th annual Saturday in the Park. KCAU 9's Mallory Smith is there at Grandview Park talking to vendors about how they prepared for an even longer festival this year. Mallory? Yeah, Sophie, the vendors I spoke with have been getting ready for weeks. Now, some vendors say they've been coming to this festival for a decade or more, but with the festival being two days now, it's been extra stressful. The problem I heard the most, vendors having issues with getting raw materials. 
causing some to hike up their prices. But for now, many, like first-time vendor Robert Rivers, says the process took longer than anticipated, but he's confident he'll be able to serve customers all weekend. Days of prep, yeah, literally. I mean, it's all based on how much you can do a minute, how many minutes are in the event, so you got to just multiply that and hope you figured correctly. Some food options you can look forward to here. Indian tacos, burritos, barbecue, and treats like mini donuts, funnel cakes, and make-it-yourself shaved ice. The festival starts here tomorrow at 5.05 p.m. at Grandview Park with Gallivant. Reporting live in Sioux City, Mallory Smith, KCAU 9 News. All right, beautiful day there. Thanks so much, Mallory. And it's time for our first check on the weather, although we just got a perfect eye into how the weather is at least in Sioux City, Scott, but pretty indicative of what we're seeing here today in Siouxland, a summer day. Right, plenty of sunshine, a lot to look forward to, to uh, down there at Grandview Park with the food especially and also the music, of course. Today we had high temperatures up there in the 80s throughout Siouxland for the first day of July. A high temperature of 87 this afternoon in Sioux City and Wayne, 87 degrees in Spencer, 86 today in Denison. Temperatures tonight should be dipping into the 60s throughout most of the map here. Looks like we'll be able to maintain the sunshine and heat as we travel into the 4th of July holiday weekend. Another look at that Saturday in the park forecast, too, is coming up with the 9 on 9 in just a few minutes. Sophie? All right, thanks so much, Scott. Well, each year, more than 3 million acres of South Dakota farmland is dedicated to growing hay. But in 2021, every acre is under drought-like conditions. It has forced South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem to put a state of emergency in place. Extremely dry conditions threaten livestock as the producers might not have enough yield to feed them all. Barnes Hay and Feed of Gayville, South Dakota, had to travel out of state to find more hay including to North Dakota, Minnesota, Nebraska, and also in Iowa. The community of South Sioux City has seen their sign painted on brick for seven decades. And at the end of this month, Levine Cleaners will close their doors for one last time. Meet the couple who runs the only dry cleaning business on that side of the bridge in this week's edition of Siouxland Stories. My wife's 75, I'm 76. It's time. On July 30th, Al and Carol Levine will officially close their dry cleaning business, started by Al's father back in 1951 and run by this couple since 1968. There's a lot of memories in here, I admit. Uh, a lot of them I can't take with me. Um, I kind of grew up in this place. Uh, I went to school right down the alley from here and this is my playground which is why this storefront has always meant so much more to Al than just a place to work. Evidently, uh, with my wife up here, we spent a lot of good times up here, hard times and good times, and, and we met a lot of people, and we enjoyed those people. We, we conversed with them, and then I followed in my, foot, my dad's footsteps. So we had to ask, how was it working side by side with a spouse for five decades? We are with each other 24-7, except when I've been in the hospital or she went up to clean up after her, after her mother passed away. <laughs> there were, we've had our trials and errors like any marriage has, but uh, we made it succeed. And she doesn't want to change husbands anymore because they're too difficult to change. And Carol tells me she wouldn't have had it any other way. So a typical day for the couple was filled with a steady flow of customers and routine. I get here in the morning, I have a couple cups of tea and a, and a chocolate chip cookie, and, and then I uh, go back and I start the cleaning machine up and clean a load or two of clothes, and uh, after I get them in the machine, I come up and eat my breakfast, and, and then it's a matter of coming up here and maybe doing some pressing or doing some sewing, whatever has to be done. I'm here doing uh, coats uh, and jackets on this press uh, using the Susie there and then the utility here. Here's a couple of uniforms that my dad had sponsored a baseball team, I'm guessing in the late 50s or early 60s. So what's next for Al? Got some talents that other people don't have, like I can put in zippers. Uh, in coats, I can shorten pants, I can put zippers in pants, and, and maybe I'll do something like that. Who knows? 
Do make sure to watch for more Siouxland stories. They air here every Thursday on KCAU 9 News at 5 and 10. And if you know someone with a unique story, we'd like for you to share it with us. It's easy. Email us, news at kcautv.com, so the rest of Siouxland can hear about them too. Well, starting today, people in northeast Nebraska can now receive KCAU 9 over the air. Previously, our signal was only available through cable or through streaming services, but we've partnered with Flood Communications to make that change. Channel 35.2 has been turned into channel 9.1. The change should be made automatically, but if your TV lineup has not been updated, a rescan should fix that issue. Lawmakers say thousands of Afghans who helped the United States now face the threat of execution by the Taliban. Why they're urging the Biden administration to take action coming up in about 10 minutes. And it's going to be hot out there for the 4th of July holiday weekend as sunny and dry weather looks to persist for a while longer. But there are some reasons to be optimistic for precipitation next week with some thunderstorm chances returning. Your 9 on 9 forecast up next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. You have to paint the picture of a first day of July here in Siouxland. I think today is the day, Scott. Yeah, this is just about it out there, Sophie. Lots of sunshine, warm conditions, and hey, there's a sailboat on Lewis and Clark Lake in Yankton, South Dakota. A good day to get out and do some boating today as we did have some very warm temperatures throughout Siouxland, and maybe you'd be enticed to maybe jump into the water too. It is quite warm. Here's a look at our current conditions now in Sioux City. The temperature is 87 degrees. We have an east wind of 10 miles per hour. Hour. Relative humidity, not bad, 37% to dew point of 58. So at least it's not too terribly muggy outdoors. We're seeing our temperatures mainly in the 80s across the upper Midwest. It is 85 in Minneapolis, 92, an exception there in Aberdeen, South Dakota, now 87 in Valentine, Nebraska, and 86 down the road in Des Moines. Looking in closer to Siouxland, it's 87 degrees in Yankton, 85 in Norfolk. We're checking in with a temperature of 86 in Tacoma, as well as Denison, and a current temperature of 82 to the east in Stormlet on Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures temporarily take a dip, but it looks like we'll be right back in the 90s for next weekend. Thanks to Jerry Day in South Sioux City, Nebraska, for snapping this picture of a beautiful patriotic scene there that uh, with Veterans Memorial there in South Sioux. Thank you very much for passing in that photo. Pretty appropriate as we uh, move into Independence Day weekend. You can see, uh, just go to our website, SiouxlandProud.com, find the weather tab, send us your pictures if you have something that you want to share with everybody. That's right, and uh, I know we've been putting out this PSA, but if you get any Saturday of the Park type pictures, send those our way. Yeah, definitely want to see those, too. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Well, after his football career was cut short, one young athlete is finding renewed confidence in himself. How he came back from the hospital to competing on American Ninja Warrior coming up in just a few minutes. But first, there is a push for the Biden administration to evacuate Afghan allies who helped the U.S. Why lawmakers say time is now running out. Next. Members of Congress and advocates tonight are pushing for the Biden administration to evacuate more than 18,000 Afghans to keep a promise many service members made. Our Washington correspondent Basil John reports. Let's show these Afghans, let's show the world that we have their backs. Massachusetts Congressman Seth Moulton says the U.S. needs to support Afghans who risk their lives to help Americans. When guys like me asked Iraqis or Afghans to work for us, we said to them, we have your backs. Molden served and fought with Afghan allies. He is calling on the president to evacuate more than 18,000 Afghans before finishing the military withdrawal. It takes 800 days to get a special immigrant visa, and we're going to be out of Afghanistan in less than 80 days. Hussein Kazimi is one of many Afghans who served the troops as a translator. He fears for those still in his home country. I feel, I can feel and understand their situation because the threat is real and they are, they are in danger. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are voicing support for the thousands who say their lives are threatened by the Taliban. Republicans like Pennsylvania Congressman Fred Keller and Dan Muser are calling on the president to take action now. The idea that we would abandon them will set a terrible precedent for the United States and our military moving forward. We must secure their safety uh, before an entire pullout takes place. Reporting in Washington, I'm Basil John. 
Training for American Ninja Warrior could be daunting for just about anyone, but one young man battling epilepsy accepted the challenge. We're taking a closer look at his journey in the gym next. An athlete with epilepsy is training now to compete on that TV show, American Ninja Warrior. Audrey Hassett takes us inside the gym for a closer look behind the scenes. With every training session, Devontae Phillips aims to improve his technique in endurance. My first experience was definitely humbling because <laughs> probably like most of the people who watch the show, I was the, the guy who was like, I would have made that. But he quickly learned the obstacles on American Ninja Warrior aren't that easy. Came into the gym and I was failing stuff. I couldn't couldn't do the salmon ladder, couldn't even make a move on it. Now the moves come rather easy for Devonte, a courage he found in himself after overcoming a barrier in life. I started having seizures. Just a few years ago, he thought his battle with epileptic seizures ended all hopes of competing in any sport. I started having them when I was 14 and then we kind of went through a phase where we were trying different medications and it wasn't working and then eventually the football team just thought it was a safety risk for me to be on the team of course. So I couldn't play football anymore. So Devante eventually underwent surgery. There was the risks with it, but I didn't want to battle with the medications for the rest of my life. While healing from his surgery, he watched American Ninja Warrior and felt inspired to start his ninja journey. I'd like to eventually become a regular person on the show because I, I do love the sport probably about as much as I love football. Now healthy at age 21, Devante's confident in his warrior skills as he trains alongside his teammates each week. Taking a live look outside right now in sunny downtown Sioux City. Don't go away. Scott returns with one more check on your forecast. And before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Hey, Sophie. I don't know about you, but all this talk of Saturday in the park and great weather, pretty hard to think about working another day till the holiday actually gets here. Sounds like it should be here already. Coming up at 6, here's just a couple of the things we'll be looking at. 2020 was a rough year for the tourism industry in the Iowa Great Lakes. But a big four-day 4th of July weekend has retail as well as food and beverage businesses in the lakes expecting record numbers, even when compared to pre-pandemic celebrations. We'll check that out. And for the first time, music lovers are getting two nights of live entertainment at Saturday in the park. But more than just the volunteers are working overtime, what it takes to feed thousands of music lovers, not once, but twice. At Saturday in the park, we'll have a quick look at that as well. All coming up after World News tonight. Jake joins me. We'll see you then. All right, we will see you then. Uh, not to spoil anything completely, but I heard just one stand goes through about 300 pounds of Ooh. pork per day just to uh, make those sandwiches. I'll probably and be having some of that. Me too. Mm. And uh, we have perfect weather ordered up as well, Scott. Yeah, it's looking that way. We should have sunny skies for Saturday in the park, both Friday and Saturday. Hot temperatures, especially as we turn the page into the 4th of July on Sunday, 92 on Monday, and then the arrival of some thunderstorms as we get into the middle of next week. Okay, we can use the rain. Thank we you, could. Scott. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join us all here again tonight at 6. Until then, have a great night, everyone.